It is August the 14th, 2023, and this is the future of photography. The future of photography. Oh, look who's back. The lost son has has come back home. Oh, thank you. <laughs> It's good to be here. I, I have <laughs> missed you guys, uh, and I've missed podcasting, and I've missed our chats and stuff like that as well. So it's uh, that's all right, Adrian. Good to have you back. Good to have you back. We missed you dearly, and of course, uh, Jeremiah is also here. Hello. I'm back also for different reasons. Both of us touched the soil in Canada, and it was uh, yes, safe we, going. <laughs> we almost managed to cross paths, didn't we? But I was we just almost. in Victoria at the time when you were back in LA. <laughs> Yeah, and I, I just blasted up there briefly for a few days and uh, and back last week. So Well, I can see why you like the place. It's a very nice town, city, city, I guess, isn't it? Because it's the capital. Lo I didn't know this. It's the capital <laughs> of British town. Columbia. It is they, lovely. They have bagpipers on the docks. It's a very surreal they, experience if you visit there what? as a Brit. They, they have do. bagpipers yeah. on the docks. Uh, okay. Yes. Very hmm. It's very British oriented. Lots of Irish clothing, lots of clothes made from Irish wool. In the, in the... <laughs> it's called Victoria. <laughs> yeah, it is called Victoria. Yes, that's a good point. It is called Victoria. All Lovely right. place, though. So, Adrian, you've been traveling. Um, I'm about, I'm about to travel. Jeremiah is traveling all the time anyway because. <laughs> because movies and things i'm trying not to travel for the next two months and uh, it's cool. uh, i feel confident so we we thought we'd just talk about some of the experiences of the uh, anticipations about like what's happening in the world of travel travel photography have we else? taken pictures we've obviously most of us whether we know it or not um have continually taking uh, photographs, whether on our iPhones, uh, DSLRs, or uh, digital cameras. Yeah, I've certainly taken know. lots of pictures as so I've you've, been So you've been gone so. for weeks and... Uh, yeah, I went for a month, yeah. Give us, give us, give us a, a bit of an overview of what you, like the, the kit you had, the kinds of things you took right. pictures with. If you took okay. the real camera out at all, or if you just used your smartphone... <laughs> I didn't use my smartphone very often. I um, occasionally to do some panoramas if I wanted one on the fly rather than stitch them together later. Uh, but yeah, I did. So I, I went with a, a sort of small kit, you know, easily mobile because we were traveling a lot. Um, and you know, so sometimes we were in cities. So sometimes we were uh, you know, on boats. Sometimes we were yeah you know, in, in an RV. So I, I thought, you know, and of course we had to travel as a, as a family of four and carry all our stuff. So I, I, I tried to travel light. Um, but I did use the, the real cameras all, all the time. I took my, my little Nikon mirrorless Nikon One cameras and, and they were great because you can strap those on a belt or put them over your shoulder and they don't really weigh anything and you can wander around with them all day. And sometimes we'd be out like 10, 12 hours. So I really didn't want to be carrying like five, 10 kilos worth of camera gear with me every day. Uh, that would have really put a dent in my enthusiasm for the actual trip. <laughs> Um, and I also took my trusty tough camera because uh, we had some white water rafting and other boat wet whale watching and other water oriented activities. Uh, so I wanted like to make proper sure vacation I, stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Proper vacation stuff. So, yeah. So I wanted something that I, I could, you know, fit in a pocket without any bother and really not worry about whether it got wet. It did fall to the bottom of the river while we were white water rafting, but luckily we were sort of just, you know, um, uh, near the side of the river at the time and uh, our guide <laughs> spotted it and it, it was at the, the water was only three feet deep where it fell in. So um, it was like, oh, yeah, there it is. And just pick it up. And did it take some going. cool underwater pictures while it was down there? <laughs> no, sadly, it didn't. It was switched off. But it was great. And I love just that having lots of new things to see and and you know and having things to photograph and and thinking about the way that i photograph stuff it's a real luxury um i mean the whole trip was a real luxury to be able to go and explore parts of canada like that for a whole month was a real luxury but uh you know it's uh, i didn't uh didn't feel like i was missing too much um i could have done with at times you know to, to try and take photos of whales that are a quarter of a mile away and stuff like that you know it could have done with some much longer lenses which i simply don't oh, own. so you didn't so. bring the 600 no i don't own a 600 or or equivalent um 
so uh yeah that, that was less of an option uh but you know participate in the moment right i had binoculars and i looked through the binoculars and i saw the wildlife and i was present in the moment so and and you know what you have access to ai so you can get as many whale pictures <laughs> as you want whenever you well, want why you know, why 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 am i not surprised you to <laughs> sneak this jump one in, in why don't you yeah um so well i mean that you know on the cruise ship there were there were the the official photographers who would take pictures of you against backdrop photographs of the places you were just getting off the boat to visit i was like okay well we we could do that or we could get off the boat go visit the places and see them for ourselves um you know so uh yeah all sorts of uh, all sorts of amazing stuff lots and lots of photos taken and uh and i think the the one bit of kit that i'm really also pleased that i took was my instax printer because that meant I could just print stuff uh, as I went along, and that was really good fun. And little, and is it, yeah, is it that one? Good to yes, that's the one that Square I have. Yes, the, the Instax Square Link, which I think is the the current generation of Instax Square printer. Um, uh, one of the things I love about it that was different from my much much older Instax Mini printer, because I think I have the first generation Instax Mini printer, is that they all now have Bluetooth in. So instead of having to muck around on Wi-Fi and attach your phone to a Wi-Fi base station that's projected by the printing device and stuff like that, and it's all very slow and clunky, you well, switch that, it on and yeah. it's just there. That would be the fundamental difference between my Angular Instax Square and yours because I'm still on the Wi-Fi generating from the device into, and it's a little bit of muckety muck around and. Does that it does is. that uh, require you to use their app, or does it present itself as an AirPrint kind of thing? No, you got to. No, it's all on app. the Fuji apps, uh, which oh. aren't too bad. Um, but Jeremiah, it's well worth the upgrade if you're using it frequently. That Bluetooth alone is massively worth the upgrade because it's just it there really when you turn it on, right? Yeah, yeah, it's it's my big down, you know, uh, on the uh, on my current printer. Though when I was away for several months. Obviously, you know, in a rental, I brought it and I printed, I, I would say, you know, a couple of hundred pictures. Wow. Um, and, you know, I just got into possibly working on a mosaic or, or whatnot, but it becomes kind of addictive. And using the editing on the Fuji app, on the Instax app, I found that was most helpful because the kind of dark, I guess reducing the contrast and boosting the exposure somewhat gave me uh, images that were um, a little closer to the screen prints that that's exactly what i do yeah and just you can do it in the app you can take a jpeg or, or whatever you know that yeah. is presented to you in the app and you yes just boost the shadows a bit uh, and maybe the overall brightness uh, and then that makes the most of the lesser dynamic range that you have on the instax film the thing i don't get is the design of it because that is so non-stackable it's just like weird weirdly pillow shaped kind of thing you only, you only need one, Chris. It's okay. Yeah, you don't need you to stack other, them. You have other square <laughs> things that you could stack that with. So anyway. But yeah, no, so really good. I, I'm going to, in fact, I've had a bunch of Instax being delivered today because uh, I had an internal flight towards the end of my trip uh, and I wanted to make sure I had used all the Instax I carried with me. So I'd printed 40 odd you know, over a three week period or less than three week period. And uh, I've got a bunch more today, so I shall print off this evening and tomorrow evening and what have you. Just enjoy printing off the last half dozen or 10 or so. That, that just give us a, a, a view and i've also ordered a frame a picture frame that takes i think it's 25 of the it might might be just 20 of them but i think it might be 25 of the instax square prints in a, in a wooden frame um, is that with, like with a mat. Etsy, is that like an etsy thing uh i didn't get it off etsy actually i think i got it off amazon um but it's the sort of thing you could buy on etsy definitely but i thought i'll get a frame and you know and then uh, yeah uh, right now i'll put in photos for that trip and then maybe in the future i'll i'll swap them out for photos of another trip it's just a good way to have them hanging together for a bit i was going to ask you how you present them i i've been looking for like really good instax square books that I could just slip these things in. I found a few. Ooh. Nothing. Great, yeah, I've but. I've got one which is quite nice, which I did uh, from a trip I did in 2019, which I shot mostly on Instax Square. 
and it's it's a it's a, a like a a hardback photo album but it's got plastic sleeves in it but they're all shaped for it's the right size for each page is two in stack squares one above the other so you open it and you've got a spread of four um uh, and that was quite a nice photo album um uh, it's only it's a little we're thing. talking about actual prints that you hold in your hand and you hang on the wall and you see it in a book and and uh it's a little bit different experience than seeing it yes yeah, great yeah i love it love it so that, that that was a little bit about my kit and about the way i was working and stuff like that um yeah all good do you, do you have an idea about how many pictures you took while you were there i think about 1500 so so what's that going to be that that's over 30 days what's that 50 odd a day so not massively prolific but i got some decent coverage of what we did and of course, um, knowing you, this is all in the Apple universe. So it's in iCloud. You have Apple Photos help you sort through things and make them accessible later on and findable. I took an iPad um, and the iPad was mostly used by my daughter playing on Procreate. Um, I didn't use it myself at all. It was all on my phone. I take the card out of the camera and use the, the dongle for the phone um, and uh, upload it into just the Photos app on the phone and that was how i did it it's just so easy and i mean i spend a lot of time on digital devices right yeah the whole a lot of my professional stuff is done remotely these days and so i'm forever looking at a computer the last thing i wanted to do when i was on my holidays was spend time in front of a laptop um we had we did have a laptop one laptop with us i think as a family um i took an ipad but didn't use it i spent most of the time reading sci-fi novels on my kindle which i loved <laughs> <laughs> so, so you wear sticking screen. your nose in the computer <laughs> that's it and no, editing I, on an iphone yeah, yeah and, and, and doing a little bit yeah a little bit of of managing and a little bit of editing and some printing off the iphone so i was trying to keep it as low key as possible on, on you know backlit screens the kindle i i I, I read sci-fi books. They're big and heavy and difficult to travel with. And they also hurt when you fall asleep and they fall on your face. Um, so for me, the Kindle is, in a, is a brilliant tool. I just have oh, a, yeah. a Kindle. So, I don't even know what one it is. Um, a, a little Kindle is what I have. And uh, you can take the biggest sci-fi novels. And even when you fall asleep and it falls on your face, it doesn't hurt because it's got rounded <laughs> corners. <laughs> right. That sounds and pitch. And Apple's AI is going to help you sort through your photos and bubble up the best ones and make everything look nice. And speaking of AI, um, Jeremiah, you mentioned AI for travel photography. What do you mean? Uh, I did. There, there, there's um, you know something going around now, which is uh, of course a influencer-based <laughs> selfie manufactured. Look where I am. This is beautiful. Uh, of of. AI photography, and sometimes it has to do with travel photography, tourist photography. Sometimes it just has to do with what I would consider decorative art photography, like the beautiful sunset against uh, the majestic mountains with the perfect clouds and uh, photographers taking that picture and even putting it in some um, little decorative gallery you know on some corner to sell well that, that that isn't happening anymore because ai is competing both in travel and with pictorial photography of creating the best possible images of the sites that you are a familiar with traveling to and uh, just create them and post them say you were there it was beautiful <laughs> so 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 you're assuming that uh, someone doing that creating their travel pictures doesn't really have uh, the, the the wish to be there and experience this firsthand uh, maybe they even went there uh, but couldn't get a good shot and so <laughs> to confirm that in the public realm I mean, here the the uh, the Ed stoppers article that you sent me for this um there's this it. this guy <laughs> making making like a picture of a, a virtual uh ai rendered picture of a lighthouse um i think fire island lighthouse um which you know th this this actually rings interesting because um here in germany there's a famous lighthouse at the north sea and like it's been in, in tv ads and everywhere and everyone knows it and um that thing is being painted right now so it's in scaffolding it's yeah. So, and and this is this is a well-known lighthouse. So, if you put that name into your favorite AI 
creator and make it a creative picture of that lighthouse, it will probably pan out believable. Do you know what I could have done with that in Ottawa? Um, you've got all of the, the nice parliament buildings in Ottawa and they're all like the ones in London covered in scaffolds. <laughs> and yeah, I, I, and yeah, you know, I took one photo, which I did take on my phone because I saw it. I mean, that's hilarious, and took a snapshot to share. And because the the architecture of the Parliament buildings in Ottawa is very symmetrical, um, and they've managed to get two tall construction cranes, you know, the very very tall ones, but they've managed to get them just behind the outer wings of the main Parliament building, so they were even matching, and they were even tilted at opposite angles, so they'd maintained their symmetry even through the construction phase uh, of of refitting the building that that reminds me of uh, vienna years and years ago and vienna has this uh, big church with two identical steeples next to each other and um and and we arrived there and we had like a i don't know 20 minute walk to get there to that main square and the the, the right steeple didn't look right from the distance and the closer we got the more it became obvious that that thing is in scaffold but they glued a big photo of the steeple onto the scaffolding in original size. So it's they exactly printed, what they've done in Ottawa at the printed moment. Printed that well, out, yeah. and 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 the closer <laughs> you got, the more it fell. It it fell apart into pixels, into weird smudges, um, which was hilarious because initially it looked kind of okay from the distance, and then it. I th yeah, it's like people traveling to get to the Grand Canyon, and should you uh, arrive on a cloudy day or a misty, foggy or rainy day, unusual as it may be, uh, and you want to send those classic John Ford, powerful American West landscape photos back home, and they're just drab. So, do you know, I, there, there is something to be said for this, actually. Let's, let's be, I, I'm not usually the sort of person that jumps on this bandwagon, but let's be a bit generous because there are a couple of times when I've experienced that. So if you could replace the, the family shots that we actually took in Ottawa, replace the background of the Parliament buildings with the proper ones. Um, another thing that we didn't get the best of was in, in the Rockies, we didn't get the amazing views in the Rockies because there was a lot of fire smoke. Um, as we rolled down into BC, um, the, the the smoke cleared, but we'd been uh, and and was like, oh, that's what Canada's supposed to look like. But the uh, there was a lot of smoke in the Rockies. So as we were coming up through Banff and Lake Louise and up to Jasper, you know, and places we couldn't see the tops of the mountains. It was all very drab color because yeah, the, of course it was it was effectively overcast, right? Yeah, albeit with smoke rather than cloud. Um, and so we, we lost some of the, the benefit. Of, yeah, and that would be things, more so. unusual for Banff Jasper. It's usually pretty clear, uh, in my experience, and, and stunningly beautiful. And the watercolor, of course, you know, reflected from the, uh, reflecting the sky with a kind of um, glacier green yeah just exactly i did get a couple of those i did get a couple of uh lake louise and moraine lake which is just down the road of course um uh with the blue water but but not with the stunning skies in the background and the no. and the peaks of the mountains no. it was all covered and stuff like that so so i i would well i could i could see an ai application there so I, could, I was <laughs> maybe not recreate here. it maybe just clean it up yeah, yeah just to clean right. it i was genuinely here i've put the i've put the legwork in right but you i've been to this place use, i've taken my use... photograph Couldn't use the Skylum products because they do AI and sky replacements and these kind of things. You that could, would be kind do, of but the they don't relight it though, or they're, or they're not to the extent. If you oh, could you get, could yeah, sure. yeah. You, you know, if you, if you could say, okay, I'd, I'd yeah, you know, but I think if you, you you can use the Skylum products, obviously, but you could say, okay, so I, I could see a case for tidying up some of the photographs, cleaning them up slightly. And saying, yeah, okay, at the end of the day. After you've cleaned 80% of it up, you go, ah, it's just going to generate. <laughs> yeah, but you could content the web, Phil, you know, as well. You could yeah, AI Phil in the, in the new, you know, add a bear here, please. Right? Well, and uh, yeah, add, yeah, that sort of thing. Is like but, but then, but then it's always the question, of course, what, what do you shoot those pictures for? Because do you want exactly. to, do you want to exactly. sell, do you yeah, want to sell exactly. something or do you want to create a memory? And that memory, of course, includes the smoke and, whatever was going on there so um yeah that's that's, a memory, that's where I, <laughs> a memory of your expectation 
Yep. Uh, but, uh, <laughs> yeah. So, no, I so don't the memory of the real thing. I, I, I think I am definitely at the school that would consider the the cleaning up of it. Even even if you were genuinely there, I still think if if you make it materially different, I think that that for me misses the point because it's it's a travel memory, right? So unless unless you want to brag on Instagram with how beautiful it was. Uh, yes. Uh, you, well, possibly. Yeah. And if you want a true <laughs> but then, memory, but that's you selling should clean again, it right? up at all. Really, you shouldn't. Right. But that would be selling it again, right? So yeah. anyway, so no, I'm, I'm, I'm going the completely different way because I am uh, I'm about to head out to Eastern Europe starting early September. So the, the Eastern Europe electric photo road trip, um, which I've been talking about here before. Um, which is which is kind of the old school way of going to places to Berlin and Prague and Dresden and Vienna and Budapest and uh, other places, Transylvania. And uh, th this is about being there. This is about bringing the old school cameras, the in air quote proper cameras, the big DSLRs and mirrorless cameras and a bunch of lenses and things. And then just going to places to see them, to experience them and the cultures and take hopefully beautiful pictures so do you do you travel with a tripod uh, i will bring a tripod um chances are i won't use it much um kind of depends on i mean the so so here, here's the one thing i use the tripod for especially nowadays where cameras where you don't really need it that much anymore to stabilize the camera but the tripod for me is a um, is like a memory a memory button. You put the camera on there, you, you compose the shot, and then the tripod will keep and keep it in that spot and remember the composition for you while you wait for the, I don't know, the, the birds to be in the right spot or the clouds to come around or uh, the horse to come uh, and stand in the right spot, that kind of stuff. So, so I use it for that, for remembering my composition for 10 minutes. Uh, And then I, we, we just just this weekend um, we held a, a, a large format photography workshop here, and that's that's the I, same thing. You set up the camera, and then it, it was so much work to get everything right and set up. But then you want to wait for I don't know. You do a macro of a flower, and then you stand there for 10 minutes waiting for the bee to be at the right spot. And that's the kind of thing I use the tripod for. But it, it, I don't need it anymore for like. And unless we do some astro stuff, which is definitely possible, there will be some areas where where we won't have any light pollution. So. Or, or slow water shutter speed kind of thing. You know that 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 I would I might use the iPhone for <laughs> <laughs> the live photo and the and the long thing because that is so convenient. Yeah. Yeah, it's good. Will you be taking your tilt shift lenses? that's my main thing of course i will that that's that's the main reason i still haven't upgraded to uh to a, a mirrorless camera because the 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 newer mounts there are no tilt shift lenses for those so i have to say I, what part, i've traveled with very small cameras but I've, it's been uh, and i've used small cameras for quite a while now but i have this inkling at the moment that i should buy a dslr like a, a, a not a, a classic DSLR, yeah, one that's a few years classic old and just DSLR. like, yeah, I, I know. It sounds these it's two almost, words don't really go together. Well, no, just I'm, what I'm saying is that I don't feel the need to go out and buy a Nikon D6 or a Canon, whatever they sell as the last of their DSLRs. But, but yeah, to spend yeah a little bit of money on one, yeah, and I just think actually because small cameras are great for traveling and throwing in a backpack and you go to work and stuff like that sometimes just I, what, i'm gonna recommend i'm gonna recommend um a camera that i just have never fallen out of love with over the years that i've had it and that's my uh fuji six by nine Uh, GW3. <laughs> ah, if you can okay. get them, that's yeah, the yeah. big problem. That is, if you can find these days, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I've had this forever. So I medium no format, wide angle, point and shoot kind of setup. It's it, beautiful. It is, yeah. The lenses are beautiful. It's amazing. It packs yeah. up. It's indestructible camera. It's very simple if it ever gets yeah, I've, it's easily repaired. I've and had it, an eBay search going for years for that specific camera, and there's there's a few that 
keep coming around, like the same one, which means there's something wrong with it and someone buys it and then puts it back online again. Um, so yeah, haven't really, I, but, but then, yeah, I, but then, but then we'll be in Vienna on this tour and there's a big, uh, big used camera auction house. Yeah. West I Life, mean, if you could so. find one, get it because like I brought it to, um, Antarctica and I, I did bring a tripod and it, and it's true. I, I don't think I used it more than a few times. Um, a, because obviously the light is <laughs> quite bright, uh, you know, uh, down there in their summer. It's it's bright and it's always on. Um, and, you know, I was shooting plus X and, you know, just gen generally uh, slower. But, the you know, you're, you're shooting uh, negatives that are half the size of of a four by five effectively. Yep. And, yeah, and, yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. And absolutely stunning. And you can sling it over your shoulder and you can go walk about with it. And it's, it's really, the, the it's, really I call good. it the medium format point and shoot. Yeah. That's pretty Texas, much what it is. Texas Leica. Yeah. So, so of course, speaking of, um, of laptops and sticking your nose in a laptop, we'll extensively do that. That's also a given like uh, it's a photography tour workshop so i expect to it's two tours is one down there and the other one back up again so i ex and this is a two 10 day tour so i expect to return with i don't know three three and a half thousand photos maybe so That'd be pretty cool. I mean, and I, and I need to the sort of traveling in a car yeah, as well. You can take all of that kit, and you can take that, and 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 it's also so you've got two two things going on there that I didn't have on my recent trip. One is you've got a car, right? So you can take more kit with you, which is good. It's always nice to be able to yeah to to have those kind of choices. And the second thing is is that it's a photography tour, right? So everybody's going to want to sit. It is down about with their photography. Laptop. That's yeah. It's, it's not a vacation in in the sense of uh, let's just have fun. It's more like uh, yeah, we want to put some work in. There's there's a, there's a sure. goal to this. Yeah. Yeah, it's like taking you know taking a road trip uh, and bringing effectively all your major gear with you. So as you go, you you find the areas that require large format, point and shoot, indestructible, mm -hmm. all of that as you move through, because as we've discussed endlessly, cameras are just a tool and it really depends on your environment, what your outreach is after the images is uh, created. Uh, is it something you're posting on, you know, as you go, or is it something you're going to kind of edit carefully, print or post or, you right. know, ascribe to your... Your, and um, and as I know from experience, if I return home with, uh, f let's say, three and a half thousand unedited photos, there's a good chance they won't be edited for a long time. And so I, yeah. I, I have I have forced myself for forever to work uh, on those on the go <laughs> and return <laughs> with, uh, with an edited yeah. catalog. I feel your pain because, uh, you know, when I got back from Antarctica with many, many photographs... Uh, yeah, you, I, you probably I, still have a whole bunch not worked Not on. even yeah. a whole bunch. I have the majority of them because I yes. went into production not long after that. And, and it really requires several weeks of focus, one at a time, really, yeah. really focus on. And I'm um, really curious... Do. Sorry, go ahead. No, uh, in, in other words, it's a project that i i'm happy to do it's exciting and fabulous and i um but i want to i don't want to do it piecemeal i want to go okay the next kind of two weeks i'm gonna really dig into and so you need to find that time that that yeah. block of time somewhere and, and that's coming now that i'm kind of drifting uh more back to my own work i'm going to say my own work my work without a crew <laughs> it's just me. <laughs> so, so I'm, 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 and I'm kind of curious how much AI will play a role on this tour because uh, some of the people traveling with me are more tech-minded and probably um, curious about that and have probably even looked into that. So, um, I will report back. Have I'm you back. guys uh, used uh, Topaz in any way, shape? Or form, whether it's not, the sharp not much, the, just a little. No. I use it uh, consistently, not the photo AI, which I'm going to explore, but but I, I use Gigapixel um, to up res. And, but I've never tried to up res, sounds weird, 
um, photographs that I've taken with a camera. Even uh, with my Leica, which is really sharp and fantastic, I haven't tried that. And that's something, certainly with the with the Antarctic pictures, which some of which you know are are shot with the six nine. Uh, of up that for a massive print and just to see how it handles pixelation and, and those kinds of artifacts. And and we have to say uh, Topaz Giga Gigapixel AI is pretty much an AI up so it will not just make things bigger, it will fill in missing detail and yeah. that kind of stuff. So it'll... it'll Presumably, do a very good job at yeah, it's at inventing it, the right things to make it look proper. It's it, it's a it's something that as I've gotten to use it more and more, I really really think it's amazingly de uh, designed, and, you know, and they keep up upgrading it. You know what's really interesting is I always I always uh, I was a bit um, um, not against it, but kind of ambivalent about upraising is like yeah who needs that yeah. and then ai came along and the initial ai tools the initial ai generators were only able to generate like 512 by 512 pictures very small ones and you kind of had to use upraisers and of course those ai upraisers are now built into these tools so you generate something at I don't know, 1024 pixels square, and then you up it to four times the resolution. And those results are, in fact, very good because those pictures have already are already artificial. So the <laughs> artificial part that the up adds doesn't really hurt. But that yeah. kind of makes it sneak into my, my consciousness regarding other pictures as well. Well, so that's why I'm asking because I've never happening. used it with real photography or yeah. or uh, you know unencumbered uh, by I, technology I, I played with it when lightroom had it built in like lightroom has this ex i don't know what it, what they call it but there's a super resolution thing that uses ai and it doubles the resolution in both dimensions and um, i tried it on a few of my shots and i never had the need to abreast something so i played with it 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 massively increased the size of my files and i was like yeah i don't really need that so i haven't really looked Back. I have I and have it. been using Photoshop beta and Photoshop's neural uh, filters f uh, experimenting with their upresing, which is I think up to four times, w and also has a, a uh, has the ability to um, kind of step on the JPEG, um, you know, jaggies. Uh, um, that could be interesting. <laughs> and just comparing it to to Gigapixel is pretty good, I have to say. And I'd probably start there with a uh, a regular photograph. I can I can see I might have it uh, use for it soon. I know it, there's a, an extension to Luminar Neo, which I'm using a lot at the moment, which is an AI powered upscaler. Uh, you know, I haven't used it yet, um, but I can see myself using it because I am shooting with these you know older digital cameras with you know 10 megapixel sensors and stuff like that i can see if i if i get a, a shot i'd like to print at a larger scale with you know with that i've taken on one of those cameras here's, the ability to upscale here's, it here's be, a wild thought could be good here's Go a on, wild then. thought the the whole com com computational photography aspect in cameras now fixing fixing geometry because the lens doesn't correct for all the bend bends and stuff and the, the the every camera does that right now even Leica's and Hasselblad's do that so um how about making those cameras cheaper to produce by having smaller sensors in them with less resolution and have an up res step built in and well, uh, one reason depth I think of depth of field they're do, um, they're doing uh, but that you can do this oh, artificially as well so, yeah. that's <laughs> anyway yes. So That's travel, three different kind of travel things. Yeah. So <sighs> uh, anybody out there has, has uh, wanted to visit anywhere on Earth, basically go check it out uh, with uh, Google. This, this is a callback to our virtual photography um, mm -hmm. episode that we did a few weeks ago. And, and um, you know, travel around the world virtually using uh, Google and uh, pick your place. Um, I'm wondering if you are able to very specifically enter the, um, the, the specifics of the map and then generate a, uh, an image based on a very specific location and then light it appropriately and then uh, stick yourself in it. 
and then share <laughs> and then share that with us on our TFOB um, yeah. Discord, so, right? Virtual yeah, yeah. travel Absolutely. photography. You can go anywhere you want. And, All right. Uh, okay. So I'm still gonna try. Get a shout out. <laughs> <laughs> the pics. How about the pics? Um, let me kick this off with uh, the topic that we've talked about in the past: meta lenses, lenses that are flat, that are not made of bent glass or or ground glass, but that are made of like like make like made like computer chips with nanostructures on them that are like little light wavelength size little pillars and things that will bend the light and do things with it well they are finally here and they have been here for a while and uh, I found a video that uh, talks about these and shows how they are made and where they are used and it's just amazing that um, if you have a if you have an iPhone you are already using these meta lenses because the um, the projector in your um, what's it called face ID camera the thing that projects the dot pattern on your face to to make the the phone recognize you that is a meta lens so they're not being used in cameras just yet but uh, there are other areas that will allow you to to um for example they they, they can see polarized light so um that means they can detect depth in things like you can get 3d uh, information out of things with a single lens um and uh and and some other uses um i will link that video in the show notes it is very interesting that's definitely the looking. future of photography oh some some of those things some of those meta lenses will allow you to see to see um for example cancer skin cancer um because because it polarizes light differently so you can see that and uh, and diagnose it with something also, like like a like a star trek tricorder right you hold it to the skin and it goes beep there is something also that assuming is. once those chips are are kind of there just software can go i want to shoot this in infrared i want to shoot this you know what i mean it, it'll just basically and it's just a matter of time until they end up being like in cameras that take pictures like proper photo yeah. photographs but but right now they're already there in millions and millions and millions of devices and yeah. they just snuck in there it just arrived and here they are so we're, re we're ready we're yes. ready for it all right um adrian you brought us Lumia, luminar neo panorama extension uh, yeah, so this is related to my trip, actually. So, uh, yes, um, I I love uh, taking panoramic photographs. And um, actually, phones are quite good at it these days, but sometimes the phone doesn't have the focal length you want or you just want to take it and have the same look and feel as your main camera that you're using. Uh, so uh, I do a thing which my family routinely laughs at me about. I take a photo of my hand, then take my photo, then take my panorama shots, and then I take another photo of my it's, hand. So it's I've your got marker. those as a marker, exactly on the card. So whenever I get them all downloaded to a screen, and I look at these photos, and I think, oh, those are not; those are a little bit dull. I'm like, oh no, hang on a minute, that's the middle of a sequence for a panorama. So, um, but Luminar have just released as uh, as part of the extensions set. Uh, if you subscribe to the the full version of of Luminar Neo, uh, they have just released their panorama stitching thing, and I've got to say, it's a joy to use. It's probably a combina combination of the software that they've developed and also that the hardware that I run it on, which is just an M1 MacBook. Um, is far more advanced than last time I was doing this regularly when we were, you know, uh, which was some years ago. But the the GPUs clearly are uh, a lot more powerful these days than they used to be. But these these are stitched together a dozen or so photos in just a few seconds, um, and it gives you instantaneous switching between different geometric um, styles. So and I can't remember the names of them, but there's like four or five different geometric patterns that it uses to set the perspective on the way it stitches the pictures together and stuff like that and they're all available pretty much instantly which i think is is quite wow. something so i've been i've been quite uh, quite impressed um by the way it's worked um you and you literally just drag half a dozen or a dozen photos into a box and say you know make me a panorama please and it just does it automatically from 
remembering back to the days when it used to there used to be a program called Hugging or Hugging. Do you remember that one? I can't remember mm. how you pronounced it, which was a very clear, yeah, very technically proficient program, but with the user interface to from hell. Um uh that you could um uh, yeah, it's sort of user interface that makes Handbrake look great. Um, yeah, uh, uh, the uh, but it was really very, very powerful when nothing else could do the job at the time. Um, this stuff has come along uh, brilliantly. Or else and grab, grab your camera. Yeah, <laughs> I, 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 rem- I distinctly remember the day I first played with the back then brand new algorithm called Auto Stitch, and it oh, was on the phone. It was yeah, no, 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 no. Oh, it was, was it was, it was on a Linux command line oh, thing, okay. and you had to have the JPEGs ready, and it would rattle on for like I don't know ten minutes and spit out a panorama automatically. Uh, things things have come quite a long way. There were there were some really good iPhone apps before they built panoramas into the camera app. Uh, there were some really yes. good third party iPhone apps that could do stitching. And uh, I mean, in, in the earliest days when the iPhone graphic input that was limited, wasn't it? It would never output more than a three megapixel image or something, regardless. Or yeah, like really early iPhone models. Um, yeah, it was a bit restrictive then. But there was a golden age of probably around 2010 or something like that, where the, <laughs> the phone had sufficient power that these panoramic stitching apps on the phone were actually really, really effective. Um, but but this, this of course is a, is several classes ab- above that, and uh, it makes it very yes. easy to to produce some nice images. So that's my pick of the week. All right, and last but not least, Jeremiah, you're taking us to space. I am. I, I, again, this is a little bit of a th- callback to our virtual um, photography. Uh, but you can take photographs using absolutely massive telescopes. Um, because now all their um, their input output is all online, and uh, you can basically get to shoot pictures, reserve time on some of these great global observatories. Um, and not- and does that does that mean you get some some actual time that that your yeah. clicks move that big thing around, or yeah. is that more like tapping into huge databases of pre existing? As I recall, uh, I think you could enter where you wanted to be. I mean, I don't, you know, I don't recall how much control, but you, there is right. some, and um, it, it's just a great way of awesome. of actually taking pictures using massive telescopes that you would never be able to obviously do on your own um, through the power of um, online. Um, worth, That's it, cool. Worth I like it's not, that. It's a not lot. free, right? You have to pay it's not for free. it. It's 200 bucks a year, but that's if you're serious about it, yeah. Um, that, that's um, that's what you do. Um, but it's it's a great, great way of of shooting this kind of astrophotography, um, and learning about it using and you and you save by not having to buy an expensive building your own observatory. Right? <laughs> yes, this is <laughs> awesome! Better. Awesome, all right. Okie dokie. Well, that's it for today, I guess. Yeah. Um, travel photography in several different flavors. Um, that's it. Even outer space. And uh, well, that's, that's kind of a travel thing as well. I mean, now that if, you, if, you have it, if you have enough money, you can actually travel in space, at least. To the edge, anyway. Very, very well, they've, I, haven't there been a couple of tourists on on, on the ISS oh, space, already? Yeah, yeah. So uh, the couple went up this week on a was it a Virgin, Virgin flight that, this yeah, week? That, yeah, that was right the below the fifty mile line or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah so yeah. Yeah, it doesn't count. Doesn't count. Anyway, this is the future of photography. We will be back soon with more. You can find us online and on our Discord. Everything is linked in the show notes. Everyone, take care and until next time. Bye-bye. Bye. You've been listening to The Future of Photography. Subscribe to the show wherever you get your other podcasts. Find the show notes and more information at thefutureofphotography.com. Thank you.